Early in my career, I thought I needed to upgrade my equipment as I grew out of it, but I quickly realized that new equipment isn't going to increase your profitability or give your clients a better experience. Today, I'm breaking down the equipment that's helped me surpass $1.5 million. Hey, boudoir photographers. Are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn, and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business, working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there, and welcome back. I've mentioned it before, but I don't like to invest in equipment unless I really need to. I prefer to invest in education, and I think that's why I brought in $1.5 million in my boudoir photography business alone since 2017. The thing is, when you invest in education for your business, you're more prepared to run a business in the best way possible for you. It helps you create an experience for your clients, book out your schedule in an easier way, build a marketing strategy that works for you, your business, and your lifestyle, but most importantly, education helps you make more money. Early in my photography journey, I thought I needed to upgrade my equipment, my camera, my lenses every year or so that I would grow out of this camera and it would be time to upgrade. I quickly realized new equipment isn't gonna increase your profitability or give your clients a better experience. New and better equipment isn't gonna make or break your sessions or your session sales. You definitely need good, reliable equipment, but you don't need to constantly upgrade your equipment either. That being said, as a photography business, you have to invest in some equipment. Today, I'm going to break down what equipment I actually use in my business. I'm talking cameras, lenses, cards, lighting, computers, tablets, literally every piece of equipment I use in my business to bring in those high sales. So, Let's get started, and by the way, I'm going to link all this equipment in the show notes so that you can see what I'm talking about. The first piece of equipment, and really the equipment no photographer can run a business without, is a camera. I have two because I really believe that every photographer needs their main camera and a backup because accidents are going to happen, but your backup doesn't need to be super fancy. In 2015, I bought a used Canon 5D Mark III from another wedding photographer. I also have the Canon 5D Classic. It's my backup camera. It's also the camera that I truly learned on, which surprise, surprise, I bought off eBay. Now, I do wanna talk about one more thing. If I ever needed to have a backup for my backup, which has happened in the past, I also have the option to use my sister's DSLR if I need to. It's a Canon T3i and it's technically my very first camera. I gave it to her after I grew out of it but I've had to use it for a session before because my other camera, the battery was drained and then my backup camera battery drained really quickly too. So I had to use it in an emergency situation. So you're probably thinking, uh, Tracy, a Canon T3i, that's a beginner camera. And it is, but the thing is a great photographer can create art with whatever camera they have. The most important thing that you can do is create consistency for your clients and You can do that with any camera. You don't need a newer model to produce great photos. You need a camera you understand and that you can easily produce those images that you know are going to bring in those high sales because your clients can't live without them. The second piece of equipment you have to have as a photographer is, of course, your lenses. I have a 70 to 200 2.8 2L, which I bet you won't believe it. I bought this, this lens used from another wedding photographer in 2016. Seeing a theme here, you don't have to buy brand new fancy equipment to make a lot of money in photography. I love the 70 to 200 because of the compression. It is so beautiful. It fits my style and I use it for 98% of my images. The only time I won't use a 70 to 200 is if I need a little bit of a wider angle, in which case I just use my 50 millimeter 1.2 L and you're not going to believe this one for sure. I actually bought it brand new. I'm still shocked I bought it brand new, so I know that you are. But in all honesty, I would probably have been fine with the Nifty 50 1.8. It's the intro lens that we probably all started with 10 years ago. I think it was $99, but now it's $125. 
for some reason, I convinced myself back then that I needed the L lens. I think it was 2017 when I got it. So I have it and I rarely ever use it. The third piece of equipment you have to have as a photographer is your camera memory cards. Now, one important thing I want to note is that my 5D Mark III has dual memory card slots. This has saved me on more than one occasion. So if you have a corrupt card, then it's fine because you have your backup card. You don't have to panic. When you're using your cards as much as you do as a professional photographer, then you're more than likely going to eventually experience some corrupt cards. If you have a corrupt SD card, when you're uploading your photos to your computer and you have those dual card slots, you just grab that second card, upload those photos, then go about your day after you throw away your corrupt card and order a new one, of course. But I highly recommend investing in a camera that has those dual card slots specifically for that reason. So how many cards do I actually have? I really think that you can never have too many. I have probably eight or so of the compact flash cards and I think like 15 of the SD cards. Now, the reason that I have to use those CF cards, the 5D Mark III uses a CF card and an SD card, so it's not a choice for me. That's just what I have to use. In my settings, I've got both set to save to raw. I know some photographers have the CF card set to raw, the SD card set to JPEG. After having a corrupt card one time, I switch my settings because I want full control over my images on either card. I did have a question asked about which one is my primary and which one is my backup. And in all honesty, I use them interchangeably since they're both set to raw. Hey there, I am interrupting this episode because I wanna let you know that I write a newsletter every single week where I cover photography, business, marketing, strategy, industry happenings, client wins and celebrations, and so much more. It's just for you and you can get on the list right now at rebrand.ly slash TLC newsletter. But I'm also gonna link that in the show notes as well. And now back to the show. The fourth piece of equipment you have to have as a photographer is digital storage. <laughs> as photographers, I think we all run out of storage really quickly. So I want you to get in the habit as soon as possible of backing up your images in multiple places and in a secure location. Let me explain my process. I have four external hard drives. One is just the one that I work off of. It's plugged in 24 seven to my computer. Then the other three are my backups. I do go a little bit overboard here because I've had two hard drives fail over my 10 years in the industry. So one portable external is the one that I work off of. It stays plugged in 24 seven. Once I complete a session, deliver the products, then I back up the images to the other three hard drives and then I'll format both of my cards and then I back up the fully retouched photos from the session to a folder in Dropbox. So no matter what, if all of my hard drives failed, I would at least have those fully retouched photos saved to Dropbox. Plus the client also has the copies of the fully retouched photos that I also request that they back up as well because I just wanna make sure that we always have her photos. If you're wondering what software I use to deliver gallery images, I use ShootProof. Some of the photographers I coach use Pixie Set, Sprout Studio, several other gallery options. I've been using ShootProof for so long that I would hate to change and that's why I haven't. And if you want to know more about like the softwares that I actually use in my business, just let me know, DM me on Instagram at it's Tracy Lynn. Let me know you want that episode and I will make sure to get that put out. The fifth piece of equipment that you have to have as a photographer is your lighting. I mostly use natural light for boudoir photography. I really think that it just feels more real, more natural, obviously. Like a woman is not gonna be sitting in her bedroom with all kinds of like extra lighting, you know? So I sometimes do need to use some additional light. When I need a little bit more, I do prefer continuous light over strobes or flashes. It's just easier, quicker to use, quicker to set up, faster and easier to get your light correct, and it just mimics natural light really well. That's my style. I used to use a Westcott Spiderlight TD6, but after that was discontinued, I invested in a Westcott Solux. So far, I'm loving this. The spider light was a multiple bulb light, whereas the Solix is a single bulb. It has the most beautiful soft light. It mimics that natural window light that I love, and you can change the white balance to what you prefer to shoot with. 
I also have two eye slides and I love them. I don't use them that much, but if I'm going for a more dramatic look, the eye slides are definitely my first choice. These eye slides are daylight balance and they look like lightsabers, so they're super fun if you're going for that look. Sadly, I do think they've been discontinued as well, but there are other options on Amazon and I'm going to link those in the show notes just in case you're wanting that more dramatic light. I've also used Alien Bees and some more expensive strobes, but I finally just switched back to Continuous Light because it just fits my style so much better. The sixth piece of equipment that you have to have as a photographer is of course your computer. My main computer is a MacBook Air. I chose it for a reason. Most importantly, it's small and portable since I'm on the road all the time. I work off my external hard drive so I have plenty of storage and it does literally everything that I need. Remember, I don't do my own retouching, so maybe if I did, I might want a bigger screen, but I really don't even know that I would. This MacBook Air that I have, it's really fast. I do some minor retouching on it and it's not been a big deal at all. I almost invested an extra 1500 or however much it is on that MacBook Pro, but I'm so glad I didn't because it was definitely not a necessity. I do have the screen extender for when I'm writing, but it's not really for my photography business, more for the education side. I also have an iMac desktop at home. I don't use it much at all. I think it's slower than my MacBook Air. It's bulkier and I actually hate using a mouse. I love the trackpad. I know I'm weird. My sister does some VA work for me, so I've actually let her take my desktop to use at her house because I was using it just so rarely. I didn't need it and she because she does the VA work for me, she needed a computer. When I'm doing my ordering sessions, I do like to have my iPad out so that I can quickly give the total to the client. What I'll do is share my screen and then while she's looking at the final images to make sure she loves them, I get her total together in QuickBooks on my iPad. The transition is smooth. She's not waiting for me to get her total together. Sitting there awkwardly in silence, everything just happens very smoothly. The seventh piece of equipment you have to have as a photographer is, of course, for retouching. Really, let's be honest, this part's optional, but I know that when I was doing my own retouching, it definitely helped me out. And it's a Wacom tablet. I think that I'm saying it right. I've never really known. I used to call it Wacom, but then I heard people calling it Wacom, so I just went with that one. <laughs> I have the smallest one. It's an 8 by 6 inch Wacom Intuos small Bluetooth graphics drawing tablet. I really don't think you need the big one for retouching photos. Plus the smaller one is a lot cheaper and a lot more portable. So if you travel like I do, it's a lot easier, but it does make skin softening and cleaning up the skin and the photo in general so much easier. And it's most definitely a learning curve, but once you figure it out, it's really easy and really smooth. Now, if there's one thing that you get from this episode, I think it's very important that you have gear that you can count on and that you know how to use well. You don't need the newest camera or the latest and greatest computer or the most expensive anything really. You can make a lot of money with what you have if you know how to use it well and then upgrade as you need or want to. You don't have to invest in the newest stuff right off the bat, even though the name brand marketing tells you that you need to. In fact, I don't think that you need to use new equipment until what you have actually breaks down. I mean, I'm living proof. There is no piece of equipment that's going to save your business, but to be honest, the right education could. Over the years, I've invested like crazy in education, business, marketing, lighting, photography, education to become even better with what I already had. And that's the thing. I truly think took my business to that next level, investing in education. I say it a lot, but just because you have amazing work and you're super talented or you have the best equipment, that doesn't mean that you're going to make it as a photography business owner. It really doesn't. I actually know of a photographer who invested her entire retirement in her photography business. Within three years, she'd quit. Her work was great, but instead of investing in education to grow her business, she just bought all brand new equipment, went all in. I want you to know, unfortunately, your clients don't care what kind of equipment you have or use. Your clients care about your work for sure, but what they care more about, the experience you provide. Are you professional? Was it easy to find your business? The clients are going to choose the first photographer whose work they love. You might have the most amazing work, but if they can't find you, 
you're not getting booked. And that's why it's so important to really focus on your business and marketing strategy early in your career. And if you're ready to take your business to that next level, well, I'm positive I have just the thing for you in my course and program list. So today I want to try something a little bit different. If you're ready to take your business seriously and finally go full time in the next six months, I want to ask you to find me on Instagram at it's Tracy Lynn and DM me just the word equipment. What I want to do from there is just chat about what might work best for your business. Literally no pressure. I'm just going to ask you a few questions to figure out where you are in business. And if I have something that is going to be right for you and your business and the way that you want to scale. So go ahead, find me on Instagram at it's Tracy Lynn and let's chat and see where you are in business and what would be best to help you grow and scale where you are right now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.